What's going on, y'all? Okay, this, this is my second run at this. Uh, the first one, I was going back and forth between two tabs, and the camera shut off on me. So, I just went ahead and made me some notes, and we're, we're going to try this again here. Wanted to cover some operating practices for you new guys and gals here. What's allowed, what's no-no, what's specific to the FCC rules and regs, you know, what, what's expected of you on the air, and, and what's going to get you in trouble, right? And that way, you, you, you know right out of the gate what's, what's going on. Okay. First thing I, I, will, I will say, profanity on the handbands. Yes, it happens, but we we frown on it big time. It's not like the FCC is going to come in and pound on you or anything like that if if you let one of the the seven deadly words slip out. It it's not like that. the The FCC, since I've been in the hobby, has had a a real problem with the enforcement issue. Okay. They simply don't have the money or the manpower to go after everybody over every little offense, okay? So if something does slip, move on, but just don't make a habit of it, okay? Just remember in your mind, be clean about it, okay? Yeah, this is generally one reason that you will find many hams will condescend toward CB operators, okay, uh, much of the CB gang, anything will fly, anything goes. We we try to maintain a level, you know, not, not that we're the moral majority or that we're holier than now or any of that. We, we like to get on the air, cut up, have fun, uh, etc., but we, we like to leave the language at the door, okay? But it, as far as actually getting a, getting a fine or a notice, you, you've really got to be throwing some language out and really be misbehaving to even get a letter from the FCC, let alone for them to find you or come looking for you. Okay, so you know, let me throw that out front. So uh, enough of the with, with the language. Music. Again, forbidden on the air. Doesn't happen. Many on the CB bands will key the mic and play the radio in the background or what have you. And we we tend to just rule it more as foolishness than, than anything else. Now, topics to be discussed on the air is pretty well limitless. Any anything you want to talk about, you know, computers, guns, you know. Uh, Religious belief, politics, any of that. Let, let me add to this. With, with the religious and the political discussion, be discerning. Be smart about it. Because them two are hot topics. Okay, A lot of people get very passionate one side or the other. Uh, we, we have no law saying you can't talk about it or you will talk about it. And in fact... There are many amateur radio organizations with a religious theme, you know, uh, Christian amateur radio services, etc., you know, that, that have a, a faith base to them. So it, it's not like those discussions are outlawed, and you, there, you, you will find Bible studies on the air, etc. Just... My my advice there is is be kind about it and be decent rather than getting argumentative. Okay, if somebody's got a differing opinion, more power to them. You know, they, better to be friendly about this than create a bunch of strife in the club or you know getting a bunch of people pissed off at you because you were a blowhard about the faith or. You know, you Republicans or you Democrats or, you know, you Christians or, you know, whatever. You, you all get the point, what, what I'm trying to say. 
Okay, so just you use your head with, with that. Okay. Uh, sexual topics generally do not come up. Uh, okay, I mean, we, we may get around here a little bit here and there, but we keep that pretty light. Okay, so... I'm I'm just throwing that out there again. There there's no prohibition uh, or no regulation on that. Just again, use your head. Now, some more prohibit uh, prohibited stuff versus what's allowed. Broadcasting on the on the air is forbidden, but one-way transmissions. Are allowed and that will sound like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth but you'll ask okay what's the difference okay you think of an AM or FM broadcast station or a television station they're broadcasting out for everybody to see and for the biggest audience possible etc in the amateur radio service one-way transmissions geared specific to a, a particular amateur radio operator or to the amateur radio service in general. Okay, and what do I mean by that? Okay, you get on the air, you key up, and you call your spouse, your buddy down the street, whatever. When you give their call and follow it up with your call, that is essentially a one-way transmission until they reply. Or if, if they don't reply, it, it is a one-way transmission. So how, how are you going to, to avoid that? Uh, you won't. Okay. Morse code practice. Telegraphy practice, as it were. A one-way transmission geared specific to the amateur radio service. Those are allowed. Uh, the, the kicker with that is, though, if you're going to run code practice on the air, the schedule with which you do that does have to be announced, uh, time, date, frequency, etc. The American Radio Relay League is the best example of this. They have CW practice pretty regularly, and they post the their schedule of what frequencies they're going to be on, what times they're going to be on, what speeds they're going to be running. And they'll even a lot of times put in what text they'll be using for the practice. They'll put that on their website as well as in the magazine they publish, which is called QST. The W1AW schedule is in there for the code practice. Let me see what else I've got in here. Uh, as far as one-way transmission. Uh, announcements. From the radio club, say you're having a net, your club net, on a particular weeknight, one-way transmission. Hey, there's the club meeting Tuesday night at 8 o'clock, or there's a ham fest over at the junior college on Saturday, or there's a ham fest at the church on Sunday. Again, one-way transmissions geared toward the amateur radio service, uh, you know, specific to the amateur radio service, a one-way transmission, not geared toward the population as a whole. Uh, prohibited uh, transmission, of course, is malicious interference. If your neighbor down the street is, is on the air and you think he's a butthead and you want to try to jam him or tear him up or whatever, and, and it, it goes both ways. He's, he's not allowed to do that to you. You're not allowed to do that to him. Again, not like the FCC is really going to do anything, but it, it's it is in the rule book and common courtesy. Okay. That al that alludes to one of our operating practices too of running as little power uh, as you possibly can when, when you're on the air. You know, if, if you're on two meters and you're chit chatting with the locals, you really don't need a lot. If you start pumping things up and running higher power, odds are you're going to start interfering with the people that, that live close to you. So that's why the rule about turning back the power and, and not running all that is is there and, and the thought behind it. Okay. Uh, let's see what else have we got here? Uh, trans 
97.111, I wrote down. Transmissions necessary to meet essential communication needs and to facilitate relief action. What does that mean? Okay. Say you're driving down the road and you come up on a car wreck. Bad car wreck. Somebody's been hurt. No police, no ambulance, no emergency personnel on the scene. You can get up on the local two meter repeater and say, you know, hey, anybody around, there's been a wreck down here, somebody's been hurt, can you want to get the police, get an ambulance, get a fire truck, whatever down here. An example of, again, one way transmission that's allowed. Uh, you're gearing it towards somebody to get. As, as the FCC rule calls it, to facilitate relief action, to get some help down there for people that have been injured. And this too apply, would apply, say, uh, you've had a bad storm come through and the road's flooded down the way a little bit. You can get on there and say, hey, everybody, avoid road 123 down here, just shy of this intersection, it's, it's flooded. Or there's been a tornado roll through here, there's a tree across the road, you know, etc. Uh, again, one way to, you know, you're, you're facilitating relief action, you're, you're telling the folks in the gang, you know, you're, you're, you're meeting essential communication needs. You know, you're, you're telling them about a problem. Okay. Now, going along with that, uh, a lot of us, you know, Y'all know what the weather has been doing lately. Uh, crazy stuff. The we winter storm down in Texas. All 254 counties. Hurricane Elsa just come up down in Florida. We're coming up in tornado season here in my part of the Midwest. Many repeaters have a function where they can link through to the local output of the NOAA Weather Radio, National Weather Service. Okay, and this is the only time when, if you want to call it a broadcast media, is permitted, because NOAA is considered a governmental station rather than a broadcast station, if that makes sense. It, you know, it's a non-commercial, not really a broadcast station, as it were. You know, they're they're not in it for the money. They're they're out there disseminating weather information. So. Say you have a, a tornado warning or a severe thunderstorm warning coming up. Uh, many repeaters can tie through to the local NOAA station. And you will hear the NOAA feed and hear the, the announcements for the severe weather. That sort of one-way transmission is permitted. Because it is considered an emergency form of communication. You know, people's lives are... Uh, are on the line in that. Uh, and they do have an exception in the FCC rules about, you know, except to save human life or protection of property. And that comes back to 97.111. You know, when, when somebody's life's in jeopardy, it, it is acceptable. Any other time, you know, it, it's regarded as foolishness, okay? Um... We are not allowed to be paid in this hobby. This is a hobby. So if, if you drive for a trucking company or a pizza delivery joint or whatever, you do not run your business communications within the confines of the amateur radio service. If you want to do radio communications while you're doing some of that, get you a business license, get you a CB. Essentially, that stuff goes someplace else. Not within the amateur radio service. Now, say you work for the American Radio Relay League, you know, and you get paid to sit there and type out the the Morse code practice stuff, or read the announcements on the air, or you know, you you, you do things like that. In that case, a paying position is is allowed, but you're not. You're, you're being paid more for your work for the organization and not for getting on the air, if that makes any sense. Uh, same thing if, if you work for the Red Cross or the Salvation Army. Many of them have uh, an amateur radio um, oh, 
division within their services. You know, both of them are, are pretty active with us. So if you're having a, a paying position with them and you happen to be on the air with us at the same time, that's generally acceptable. But it's regarded less as a, a commercial enterprise and more geared toward emergency relief or toward you know things geared more toward the amateur radio service. Okay. So there you have it. Um, I I would also add, and I I can probably discuss this in another uh, feature regarding you know some other stuff. But look at the printouts of where the handbands are and where your particular license allows you to operate. Okay. Watch the band edges. If, if your particular license allows you to go all the way down to 144.0 megahertz, you do not set your radio on 144 megahertz and start talking. Because your every band, uh, every transmitter will have a certain amount of bandwidth. If you put it on right at 144.0, part of that will be in band, some of that will be out of band. You'll be in violation. So you, you you make it a habit of either moving up from the lower edge or down from the upper edge of where your particular license allows you to operate. Uh, again, not not a big sticking point. There there have been people that have been right there on the edge. Not like the FCC is going to crack the whip on you, but just general good operating etiquette. Okay. Uh, trying to think if there's anything else I can think of. I, I think I've pretty well covered all that for now. But uh, again, you know, during non-emergency times. General chatter is fine. Uh, another point of operating etiquette too. If, if you're on the repeater and it's busy and there's a bunch of people out there chitter chattering and the spouse comes in and wants to talk to you about something, take it off to another frequency to have your conversation. Again, not a rule, but courtesy. If, if you can make the contact on simplex, and do your business over there, you know, hey, what's for supper, or I'm running late from work, or, you know, whatever, hey, I need to catch you about X, Y, and Z, you know, and, and again, this is if the frequency is busy. If it's not, have your conversation, you know, it's not a big deal. But if it's busy and you need to catch somebody about something, say, hey, can we go over to 146.52 or go over here and uh, need to catch you about something? matter of, of common courtesy. We we have a bunch of spectrum, you know, free spectrum on two meters, two twenty, four forty. Have oogles of simplex frequencies available. Tons of it. That goes unutilized. So you know, if if you're wanting to chitter chatter and, and can do it simplex, by all means, uh make use of it. So Again, just, just common curse. All right, y'all. If there's any uh, questions, comments, or anything, put them down in the comments. And uh, well, let's talk about all this. So hope uh, hope this has been informative. And uh, I'll try to keep it moving here.